Um, welcome to the Home Builders Association of Vancouver Career Expo Live Panel Discussion, hosted by the Women's Council with support from Canadian Home Builders Association of BC, and the presenting sponsor is Fortis BC. Gold sponsors are Century Group, silver sponsors are Alabaster Homes and BC Housing. We are happy to have you here. My name is Alyssa DeVille, and I'm a proud sheet metal worker and a faculty in both the Trades Access and Sheet Metal Departments here at BCIT. I'll be the moderator for this live panel discussion. How do I get started? So how does one get started? If you took the 5 p.m. discussion, you will know that there are many career choices <laughs> with every choice and so many pathways or ways to get there. So let's introduce today's panelists. We have Ivy Fang, who is a project manager at Alabaster Homes. Hi, Hi, Ivy. Hello. We have Tiff Davidson, who is a carpenter and a foreman at Condo Works Design. Hi, Tiff. Hi. And then we have Sasha Penner, who is a heavy equipment operator at Lacey Construction. Hi, Sasha. Hello. So welcome. Let's start by exploring your careers. Um, Ivy, how about you start? Tell us a bit about your position, your company, and the day-to-day -day life. Okay. So again, my name is Ivy. I am the one of the project manager at Alabaster Homes. Uh, the company has been around for the last eight years, but only about three years ago, we started a self-performing in-house construction team. And I got to be the first PM to work on the project. Um, okay. Yeah. So... I mean, I feel like I do everything, but a couple of the key things I do is I manage the budget I make sure things don't um, get overspent. And I also manage a schedule where we um, deliver on time. My day. So I am a working mom. I have two young kids. Uh, my job site operates around 7 a.m. And because of my personal life, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't leave home until eight o'clock. And so, but it's also expected that um, when my staff calls me at seven o'clock, you can hear my kids like yelling and screaming, but uh, they're, they love it. That's kind of how life is. Right. And I'm, and if it's like a serious conversation, I'll step into the bedroom and have a serious conversation, you know? Uh, and then I would be, at, at the office um, around eight, eight 15 around that time. But, because I have two active projects right now, I like to be on the job site. So my time are usually spent on the job site, two days on each uh, project and then one day in the office, just to have like a bit of a present where I do, uh, talk to the uh, you know marketing, finance and development team. And my days usually ends around five to six o'clock. And when I go home, I put on my, a different hat, the mom hat, and I, I care to my other clients, which is my kids. Um, when they go to bed around 8.30, I get some me time, which is going through my emails again and see if there any things I miss. And then uh, I go to bed and I do this all over again. <laughs> and I love right. it. <laughs> I have to say me time answering emails doesn't sound like me time, but it's fine. It's fine. I think you reply back about that. <laughs> Um, so Alabaster does has, have a reputation as a company that embraces diversity. Um, is there quite a few women that are employed by Alabaster? Absolutely. Like, I guess, like on my team, we have about four females, uh, uh, one project manager, two project coordinator, and then one finished site super. And yeah. they're doing like, an amazing job in a very tough um like industry, aside from my department, um, we have a lot of female managers and like in the uh, executive too. Um, some things to celebrate. And I think it's like, it's not like we like, oh, we got to hire females. It's more like, you know what? They, they have display and demonstrate that they could do the job. So why not, right? And at the end of the day, they're all like females. So I think there's something to say about female project managers. <laughs> How they just ra rise to the top. They just, just yeah, happen, just, right? just magically, but like, you know, that we're just, I Hardly. think we're seeing now, right? Yeah, absolutely. As somebody who worked on 
construction sites for many years. I do appreciate a project manager who actually shows up on site and, you know, looks at what's going on. So I, I give you props for that. Thank you. Uh, Tiff, you are a carpenter and a foreman at Condo Works Design. What attracted you to this company and what does a day look like for you? Um, well, there's many different um, types of culture in our industry and that was the main reason why I joined the table at Condo Works because they are accepting and um, empowering group that um, pushes me and inspires me to be my best always and encourages mistakes because they know that that's how you learn and so that has been a very powerful thing and a big reason for my success. Um, so a day for me, work starts at eight. Um, I could be, depending on the day, I could be driving and picking up stuff before then, but most times we start our day at eight o'clock. And so I'm currently a site manager as well as the carpenter on site. So I manage a couple people and uh, different trades. And so like, it all depends on where we're at in the job site. Like right now we have a job in North Van and we just, um, like I have a fireplace guy installing stone, but I also am like managing drywall and painters and stuff. So it, every day brings something new to the table, which is really great about my job. I am currently in a position where I get a chance to be involved with the clients i get to put on a pouch and get dirty when i want to but i can also like manage to go into the office and talk like budgets and where we're at and scope and what's the next step and stuff so i love the diversity of my job but i also love the fact that it's like art for me because it's like they basically give you a plan and their dream house and you have to make it come to fruition so that i think is the best thing for me uh, but yeah so my days usually usually <laughs> as a carpenter it was eight to four but as a site manager I tend to stay a little bit later and get myself organized and do emails and such to kind of prepare for the next day so when my guys show up at eight o'clock then I already have a game plan set in motion uh, but work-life balance is also very important for me so going home and you know, leaving work at work and uh, taking care of myself and my cat and just kind of like chilling and then, you know, on the weekend doing something adventurous to feed my soul. And that's pretty much a week in the life of me, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Sasha, you are a heavy equipment operator for Lacey Construction. Why don't you share what a day looks like for you? Yes, so I am generally seven to three, uh, five days a week. Um, I, well, basically I start off in the morning. I get to job site seven o'clock, um, generally no earlier, no later, um, depending on the time of year, I guess. And uh, I guess we go over our game plan always first thing in the morning because every day changes. Um, so basically what I do is I will dig everything on a new home build because we do all custom new homes. Um, I'll do everything from the digging the foundation to like the rest of the utilities. We do all of the septic. So we do hydro, tell, water, <laughs> basically everything that entails a new home. So you're digging a big hole. Every day is a different job. I yeah. yeah, I'm digging a big hole. Yeah, that is pretty much my job. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, There's playing a lot in the more to it. I was not trying to say that. <laughs> but you're you're digging everywhere, right? You're you're running yeah. what types of machines do you normally run? So 95% of the time I'm in an excavator, which is nice. Um, we do have other equipment. We have a skid steer, a rock truck, um, a couple smaller excavators, um, just so we can do everything in-house. Um, yeah, so I guess. 
does your training cover all of those types of machines? Like when you went to school to be, um, I assume you went to school? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I went to IIG, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, to become a heavy equipment operator, did that cover all of those machines that you touched on? Like the Bobcat and the um, excavators and the everything? So in school, you actually get to kind of pick and choose what excavators or what machines you want to run. Okay. So they don't really touch on bobcats, which they're pretty easy to run. That's usually the first machine that people get tossed into. It's fun, easy, um, but they will cover everything from excavator to rock truck, grader, backhoe, um, dozer. So pretty much everything else that you can think of, you can learn in school. Um, and the schooling is actually super short, which is really nice. Um, How long is it? Eight weeks, um, give or take, depending on what course you choose to do. Um, I but, find like a lot of these like hands-on stuff, you have to really throw yourself into the at work, you know, like, so being a construction project manager, I actually get to see, I hire the trains and then actually see them executing their tasks. And like, you're like, I, I don't think you're kind of selling yourself short because I seen excavation done and I seen that type of the equipment they use and like, and just the, like the, where you, you're situated, it's so much work. So like, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool and nice. And then um, I learned a lot of different type of machines out there too. Like the Manitou, do you draw, do you know that one? Have you operated that before? Yeah. She has no idea what that is. She said she didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just calling by its name, right? But like, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's so awesome. Like you're, you know, such a, having that power over such a big machine that do big work, right? So I don't know, I, it's kind of cool. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of fun because you're sitting there trying to do such fine work a lot of the time. Delicate. You have to be so precise with a machine that's so big. And it's the challenge, I think, is the most fun part because you can keep getting better. And the more you push yourself to do harder things, the better you get at it. So it's just it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the trick of of the machine operators who can pick up a dime from the concrete yeah that's that's a little insane um <laughs> i don't think there's it no way i can do it but, but, but i've seen videos of people picking up like eggs with a machine and not breaking them and i don't understand how you can do that but <laughs> maybe wow. one day, one day. <laughs> Um, Ivy, I believe at one point you were considering um, becoming an architect. I did. I think it's, um, you know, growing up, you only know so many different types of jobs, right? And, and to listen yes. to, and I'm sure you guys know, like doctors, dentists, lawyers, and like, and there's architecture, which I find that to me most like appealing to me because I don't have to be in someone's mouth or in someone's body. Okay. <laughs> and I, I love like the artistic like um, part. So, uh, but the thing is I, I don't like school. Like I really don't like school. I don't want to like do, do the bachelor, like, you know, after the bachelor, you got to do a master. And after that, I got to do X amount of years of school. So before I commit to do that, to do that and, 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 charge like a lot and, and you know i guess student loan i decided i did a i did a bcit program and i think it's called the architectural building engineer yes. um it's only two years and it kind of taps into all different like areas of construction there is the the design part there is the building science part and there's also like the like uh finance uh, construction managing part so i took the uh the design part and um yeah, it's such a it's a, such a, a good uh, um, program that I enjoyed very much, and I, I can't say anything bad about it. And I feel like I kind of went off a tangent and I forgot what the question was. Because <laughs> I love this. The school has done, had done immensely for me. How about that? I love BCIT too. I mean, I, I did end up teaching here, so I, got, I probably said something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Oh, how um, about there? Yes, architecture. So it's a two-year program. Um, I think Vancouver, okay, I'm just going to date myself. Uh, we just won the uh, 2010 Olympics. And I got hired fresh out of school and I was throwing into a lot of things I didn't think I was uh, capable of doing. So I got to work on the Olympic Oval um, the and also uh, the expansion of YVR. And at the end of the day, I'm like, like, this is what I really want to do. Like, I didn't, and I realized design, like, unless you are a, the owner or the developer, you don't really have much to say of the des um, design. So I think because of having that work experience and understanding, talking to the right people, I didn't end up doing architecture. And, 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 and to be honest, I, I'm kind of happy where I landed. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, what do your parents and friends think of your successful career now? My parents still don't know what I do. <laughs> they're like they build stuff <laughs> she builds stuff, manage stuff are you an architect or like an engineer um my friends they think it's kind of cool because the thing is you know my my partner glenn he um he's in the nonprofit sector but he has a lot of friends that are wanting to do uh renovation or development and i'm always like hey let me bring my wife over and let me and she'll t explain to you what needs to get done and who are these people need to talk to and then i'm like yeah why not? <laughs> Girl power. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, Tiff, you have a university degree, I believe, yet you still chose carpentry. Do you want yeah. to tell us a little bit about your pathway? Um, so, I basically was encouraged to go to university to get out of my small community, and um, it was kind of the only option that I had. But I knew the first semester that I didn't want to do it, but I had a student loan to be there and I didn't I didn't have any other options. So I stuck it out and then I spent a year kind of working towards um, financially getting like a plane ticket and um, kind of networking over here because I flew from Ontario, Northern Ontario, a small town in Northern Ontario, all the way to BC, my first time flying and basically just started fresh out here and got a job working, um, cleaning an office one day a month. And then I worked myself up towards um, being the cleaning, like the cleaning people who when you finish a job before occupancy, um, doing that. And then I worked myself into being a laborer, which I was really good at. So I stuck and stayed in that role for a while. Lots of digging holes, Sasha. <laughs> and, um, um, yeah, and then I, I fought and got myself an apprenticeship and then um, towards my Red Seal and now I'm where I'm at. But I did uh, university, but I don't regret um, it because I learned a lot. Um, there are many ways, like you said at the beginning, to get where you are. And I believe that it's very important when you're young to kind of like, if you're interested in something, to kind of try it out. Um, when I was with the company that I was at when I was doing my labor, I was very much interested in the Women's in Trade program because I'm in, even in high school, like I was encouraged to because I had good grades and they pushed me towards a university degree. So I didn't even like, wasn't even allowed in high school to take college courses like shop, wow. like learning how to do welding or any of the like things like that, because that's a college degree. And because of my grades, they encourage you to university, which is very interesting because um, like you were saying, Ivy, like, I don't like doing school and university is very much like you read theories and you read and then you make like like you make papers on it but you don't actually learn the material you don't get hands-on you don't actually get experience from that like you spent yeah. four years to get a bachelor and I left there to be a social worker I had no experience no one would hire me because all I have is theories I have no experience <laughs> but like when you go to BCIT they throw at you all this practical knowledge experience and like Women's in trade would have been the perfect opportunity for me to learn like plumbing, electrical, like all the trade stuff I missed out in high school, but actually practical that I could, you know, do, do I on the weekend and do projects and do it myself if I wanted. So like, I feel like 
I should have done it when I was interested in it. But now I'm getting that experience at work every day and a little bit of knowledge from each trade that comes in. But it's a very good avenue if you're just curious because life tends to throw things at you when they're meant to be thrown at you. So I feel like I'm at the right pace, place that I'm supposed to be at. So I don't regret any of the steps along the way. But yeah, it's quite a different uh, beginning to where I am now for sure. I was lucky. I grew up in a trades oriented family, so I didn't get that push towards university quite so hard. Um, that being said, I definitely did jump around a bit before finding my niche. And I've found that many of the skills that I've learned along the way have greatly impacted my career. Um, does any of you feel the same way about some of the skills that you've gained before you joined this? It's, it's funny. So like, um, again, I'm dating myself. I, uh, <laughs> I oh, God, when I was in high school, they uh, actually had this program called Women in Construction. And uh, it was like, it, it's like a, a morning class. And I like, I, I want an easy A. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. And I'm, I'm really happy I took it because it kind of opened, because like the thing is, I didn't want to take shop. I didn't want to take electrical calls because I want like, I want to do things I want to do. But then this morning class allowed me to have exposure to um, these different outlets. So I got to learn how to operate machines. I learned how to even like um, weld and then uh, and, and and just using it, how to use tool properly. And they, at the end of each year, they, uh, they get you a practicum. And I got to work at BC Hydro in Surrey, uh, like welding steel uh, when I was 16 years old. And then at the end of the two-year program, I remember my instructor, he's like, hey, who, who, who actually see a future in construction? And I'm like, I, I think I, I will. And, and then just me and this other woman, and she wanted to be an electrician. Um, and I always think about that instructor, um, just like, hey, I want to tell him, like, look, you, like, it, it was a new program. And, like, I was like, you definitely, like, this program really opened my eyes and how, and because I was able to use machine that my parents never let me, I had I felt I had confidence, right? Yeah. Um, and and that's how I even know there's different outlets out there. Even like the BCIT, like I know to go there to go for like certain courses, right? So, yeah, like you know, you, you need that experience, you need that exposure at a young age, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, what about you, Tiff? Did you find any of the skills that you've learned? you know, maybe before anything that you learned in your cleaning company or that when you were cleaning that you use now? Oh my God, everything. <laughs> yeah. my, my homeowner basically was like, oh, it makes so much sense. Why are you still, how you started as a cleaning lady? Cause like the site's always immaculate. <laughs> so awesome. like every little skill, like it builds on itself. So like, I remember, my best friend, she was an educational assistant um, when I was in high school. And uh, she raised her kids um, on her own and she built her house from scratch and she lived in a trailer while they did the like foundation and then the framing. And then when like it was basically sealed enough, she moved in with the kids and she's still building her house like on weekends and when she has time. But like I went to help her um, on weekends and when I had opportunity to spend time with her and she basically inspired me to get in the trades because I remember her telling her dad like I'm holding a piece of plywood with her on the side and we're trying to like hold on with our feet and the wind's got it and we're both holding on and she's like Tiff's got it she's like don't worry <laughs> like she's got this and then that little voice in your head sticks with you like it doesn't matter if you're a girl like you can do this, you know, like you can do it. Absolutely. You can do it. Yeah. So yeah, it's little, it's little experiences, little things like that, that just stick with you. And yeah, back then I didn't know what a common nail was. And now I can say, Hey, I know what that is. So <laughs> that's a big progress. Cause she's like, go get them. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking for. So, <laughs> big yeah. progress. Um, so as a woman, I feel like we bring some inherent skills to the job and naturally add benefits to the workplace. Can we talk about maybe what some, some of the things that we think we normally bring? Sasha, do you have any points? Um, I actually have heard from multiple 
owners of construction companies that they actually tend to like women operators simply because they're a little more gentle and they're easier on equipment. They actually <laughs> take care of the equipment that they run, unlike the guys who, I guess, tend to just beat on them or whatever. Sometimes they, they show off a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly it. The guys want to be all macho and do whatever they're going to do. And I guess women tend to be a little bit more intricate in the work that they do. Um, yeah. That makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Speaking of like being macho, right? Um, and I feel like you know, when women women bring to construction, uh, it's it's almost I don't think it's unique, but like it's um, there's no ego, to be honest, you know. And uh, we I like collaborative, like uh, and um, <laughs> a collaborative setting and. Uh, I think that really helps get the job done, you know, and you want to make them because there's, I don't say there's ego because there's collaborativeness. People are more willing to work with you, come up with a solution, you know, because you feel like you're heard. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and despite of my position, I rely on my trades a lot. I rely on my like uh, laborers because, you know, this is what they do, you know, I hear them out and I, as a project manager will evaluate like, okay, that makes sense. Or if not, you know, and I, and then if I don't understand, I'll ask questions. And I think that's going back to the ego, like men don't, sorry, I don't mean to mail a bash, but like, that's the thing. Like they don't like to ask questions as much as like, you know, they should. And I like to ask questions because, especially in a group setting, how do you know the next person aren't say, thinking the same thing? You know, have the same question, right? So I, I ask, and any everybody benefit from it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um. So Tiff, you're working on your red seal. No, you have your red seal, right? No, so I am working towards it. I've done all my hours, and I've uh, done the schooling, <clears> and I've <throat> attempted it several times, and I fail by two percent. Each time, so I'm still working on it. <laughs> it is a very, very tough, tough test. Yeah. 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 So, so do you want to tell us a little bit about um, how a an apprenticeship slash Red Seal works? What do you mean? Well, like, what is it? What is it involved in in getting your Red Seal? Oh, um, well, there's four stages of education and you do the schooling as well as work on a job site and gain experience so you collect your hours and every time you do schooling you you have to pass the level like a test sorry i have a cat who wants to play <laughs> so yes stop it okay so <laughs> Um, and then when you're done your level four, you have to do your red seal test. And so like I passed my level four test, um, but not my red seal. Yep. So um, for me, it's like a practical or written? It's, it's a written. written. It's oh. a written. So yes, I've done it three times and I have passed I have 2%. But it's interesting because each time that I failed, I learned the gap that I am out of. Like, like the education part that I'm missing. And so I get to go back to my boss and say, okay, I think I'm missing this in my education. Because for being a woman in the trades, I've been held back a lot from certain experiences. I find that men have an ego, but they also approach the job and they kind of be like, oh, I can do that and have no experience or knowledge at all. And for me as a woman, I would never do that. I would be like very cautious to admit that I could do something without having any idea, right? But that's you're really the choir, the choir, by the way. <laughs> right? so I'm He's like walking, like, like, I know everything. I was like, all right. <laughs> so at the position that I'm at now, he basically, my boss gave me a house and just threw it at me and then took a step back and I'm doing all of it. Like I'm learning how to work with the plans. I'm lurking with the trades, all the stuff that I would do as a red seal test. I'm learning 
that experience now because before as a carpenter you have a foreman that does the plans and everything like that and they hold that knowledge and you just come in and you do what you're told every day so you don't get to work with that detail that the a part of my education that i've been missing so fortunately i've found a good company that has allowed me to do that but that's yeah. awesome the red seal is a it's a very very difficult test that encompasses basically four years worth of knowledge into one test and it's a lot to learn before you do that test it's a very difficult. Yeah. Um, but did you know that once you have your red seal, some universities recognize that and apply credits to enable you to get your bachelor's um, within only two years versus four. So by going the red seal route, you can earn money while you learn to further your career. You could even take your two years at university and get your business degree. Um, anyone who's interested in checking anyone who's interested can check out more information including resources and pathways on haven's let's build a career page under exploration education pathways so while a university degree is great it does come at a cost yeah Ivy, i was watching your video on haven's website uh let's build a career and you mentioned that you do not have any student mm, student loans to deal with <laughs> I don't. And that was because you chose a different pathway, right? Yes. Yes, that's true. So because I didn't go to university, I didn't have to um, bank, like, have student loan. And because of the fact that I was hired straight from school, I was able to earn money. Even though I had student loan, I was willing, I was able to pay it within like five years. Which is and it was bad. very minimum. Yes. So the money that I'm earning right now, it just paying my mortgage, like paying like things I want to do. And like, of course I have two kids, right? So it's going to, to them, but like, it definitely allows me to start saving, you know, and to get my own place. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful. Like the, the, the path I've chosen did not uh, require a degree. That, that works. There are many different paths, as we've been talking about, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's also a lot of diff different opportunities to learn from on the job. I'm curious to know how you were supported by your coworkers and your companies when you started your career. I grew up in construction, and I had what I thought was a lot of knowledge. But when I entered the industry, I realized that there was still so much to learn. <laughs> so as a woman entering the industry with maybe limited knowledge, someone who doesn't come from a family of trades, is there any advice that you would give? Put yourself out there, you know, and talk to the right people. Um, don't just be brave, go sign up on LinkedIn. And, and then the thing is, I actually had to reach out to a lot of females. Um, like directors, uh, just to get an idea, like what's it like in construction? And I guarantee you, like, honestly, out of the 10 emails I send out or a, a message, I get like seven responses. So we want to uplift like women in construction, you know, and I was very scared in the beginning. And, and that's probably the reason why I'm here, because I want to let you know, it's not scary. There's people out there that are willing to help you. And uh, I literally swept, I have this, so my partner's um, cousin's daughter, she told me she decided to do the AVET program without even knowing my background. I'm like, oh my God, let me tell you everything about it. So at the end of the year, I ended up hiring her, hiring her at my job site as a laborer. Awesome. I mean, she was, she was doing building science, but she said that that really allowed her to understand what a job site is the expectation and the work ethic because construction is hard you know a lot of hard work and i see a question someone asking me like how i became a project manager what kind of education the education is hands-on stuff hands-on and i work really hard i was from a cad monkey and a project coordinator project manager assistant and i landed like and i landed where i am today obviously there's like programs you could take it's called a pmp but like there's also a different path right if you want to do all education go for it right but the thing is like again i only have a diploma and i didn't do further education and i'm end up here just to just 
putting yourself out there, you know, and that's all I had to do. Yeah. Well, and there's the other part of it of like after Tiff is done her red seal, there's no reason why she couldn't go on to become a, a wicked project manager. She'll know everything to do. Well, not everything, but a lot of the things to do with the building process. So there's lots of different paths to get to, you know, a project manager or any of the jobs in construction. Yeah. Um, also with the red seal, I wanted to mention that once I have it, I could travel and use it all through Canada. Um, if I start my education in BC and I travel to a different province, like there's a little bit that we're not quite harmonized quite yet. Um, They're working on it. Like, we're not working on it, but once I get my red seal, then I could work at any province, right? And they all recognize that. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay. So the residential construction industry is built on the back of entrepreneurs. Being a hard worker and a creative thinker are traits that bode well for our industry. What other traits do you think are important to be successful in, in, in our industry? Sasha, what do you think? Um, well, just like Ivy said, you have to be just confident in yourself and put yourself out there. Otherwise, like, I guess that's how I got into construction. I saw a machine one day and I thought, I want to do that. So I, not knowing anything, got a job as a flagger just to get myself on a job site. And I started as a flagger too. I, yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> um, but I spent a year on a job site just flagging and doing whatever small tasks that my employer wanted me to do and honestly without that I don't think that I could go onto a job site the same way I could now like I can like even just learning different materials like that was a whole learning curve for me the names and, of things yeah exactly everything has a different name and um yeah uh I Yes, I decided to be a flagger just because, uh, yeah, it, 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 you just got to get yourself into the industry. Um, yeah, there is schooling entailed in that. Um, I know there's multiple schools in more mainland that yeah. do flagging. Yeah, to become a flagger, um, it's a weekend course. And it's a, it's a good way if you just want a job right away and to kind of get a, your foot into the industry. It definitely helped to learn. I was where I watched, you know, different operators, um, you know, dig, dig a hole, but specifically like, you know, if they were, you know, an inch deeper, they'd crack a power line or a gas line and then everything would be shut down for hours or a day or a very, like you're, you have to be precise. Otherwise, like exactly as you said, there's power lines above you or there's like, I spend a lot of time working around other utilities in the ground. So I'm digging directly around other water lines or power lines or whatever else. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. stressful sometimes, but it's fun. <laughs> I, um, I had a period of time where I was off work and I tried this app called Faber and to get like because i've only worked with residential homes and i thought that like i would be interested in like working with like the machines and stuff and um so i kind of threw myself on the app so to get different experiences and exposures to different kinds of construction and and flaggers are on there and uh, there's all sorts of a variety of work experiences basically like a company opens up a posting and you can apply to work there for like a day or however long the posting is open so that was a good avenue for a variety and getting a taste of the industry also so so with so many different career options and uh, within the industry what do you think is the best pathway to get into it i think just try like um i think that as a woman in this industry it's very important to know who you are to believe in yourself and if you like to do something don't let anybody hold you back just be just have the grit and the passion to push forward and there's always going to be naysayers like when i flew across the country i didn't hear one positive thing about the fact that i was starting fresh in never flying a plane not knowing anybody on this side of the world they all said i'm going to be back in like a week or two and i've been here for 12 years 
So it's <laughs> like, you just don't know, but you just can't let the negativity like sink in your head and doubt yourself, what you like, what you're interested in, who you are as a person. You just got to fight and yeah, just have that authenticity to do what you want to do for yourself because at the end of the day it's your path so if you try something and you don't like it then try something else like it's just every little baby step it will teach you something and get you closer to what you're meant to do so absolutely no wrong so and the advice that i always have for girls or women is um fake it till you make it because that's what the boys out there do right like as we've heard they go, oh, yeah, I can definitely do that, even though they've only seen it done once and they've done it, never done it themselves. Right. They say they can do it and they try. Yeah. So you should, too. Yeah. Right. You yes. should say, yeah, I mean, I've seen it done. I'll try. Might not be 100 percent. But, you know, as we said, you make mistakes and that's how you learn. Yeah. Like I had to put a mantle in two weeks ago and I'm like, I, I told the homeowner because I'm learning that I could do it. And then I turn around and go, oh my God, how am I going to figure that out? How am I going to do it? And then you do the research, you do the planning and then you do the work and you're like, wow, I did that. And I had no idea. So. Yep. So there are many different pathways to get into the trades, right? There is, um, degrees programs through, you know, any of our post-secondary um, educational places. There are programs at BCIT that are foundation programs, which are a six-month program that teaches you the basics of a particular trade. Um, BCC WIT has programs to help women that have zero experience to find a job and get into an industry. Um, Oh, there was a question. What did it say? Sasha, your schooling taught you how to operate machines. Who helps you learn the nuances of a job site? Like where to dig? Mm -hmm. um, where to dig as in like where things. Like drawings? Like do you. I think, I think they're drawings? talking about. Yeah. So do you, do you have to learn how to read the drawings or. So. I someone know how to read drawings. Usually the engineers come up with plans for everything. Utilities, it's kind of wherever it works. So that's just kind of wherever, I guess you have your certain spot on the house or building, whatever that you have your panel and all that. But besides that, it's pretty much, um, you'll come from the road. So you'll have your power box or whatever and that just wherever it works out is where you end up digging um besides that like septic and stuff like that yeah it's all on plans um i just kind of learned how to read plans myself just going through them but usually you'll have a project manager who will help you along the way or a supervisor or whatever and they will give you further guidance on where you should be digging or where you shouldn't or give you do they have, like do they sh at, like stake it too like where do like avoid and like what's what what like what you're digging for you know like stuff like that um sometimes we'll stake things out but not usually um for like bigger civil <laughs> projects you'll stake out where sumps are going and for ex like house excavations or any sort of foundation you'll have four stakes, so the four corners of your excavation. Um, but a lot of it is, I guess, just going off of plans and you, oh, it's partially, like sometimes it can have to do with the type of ground you're working in. So if there's lots of bedrock or things like that, that will kind of deter you from certain areas because you physically can't dig there yeah. or, um, uh, you'll get your BC1 call. So you'll have all of your utilities in there that are already there. So the current things on the property and you generally avoid that. If you can get them to come out and flag those things, that's always ideal. Makes your life easier. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. Because otherwise there is mishaps and those mishaps aren't fun. <laughs> but they help you learn, right? Exactly. 
Well, yeah. Yeah, one, <laughs> one fire department showing up is enough to... <laughs> So we had a question. Um, Tip, at some point you mentioned that you had to fight to get an apprenticeship. And mm -hmm. somebody was, um, Sherry was uh, concerned about that. What did you mean when you said you had, you had to fight to get signed up? Um, I was really good at being a laborer. And my company thought that I was really good in the role that I was in. And they um, wouldn't allow me to learn the tools um, and the skills to get ahead. So I basically had to advocate for myself and go to school. And then when I returned said like, if you're willing to teach me, I'm willing to learn. Other than that, I'm going to leave. So then they actually sat down and agreed to teach me. So, but yeah, I had to fight because, um, as a woman, it was like interesting because, uh, there are kids in high schools that would show up and and my company at the time would like give them a skill saw and show them like just tell them to go to work and I've been like there for two years trying to be like I want to learn how to use a skill saw like can I do it and they just were like no like this is what your job is kind of stick in your corner so it's really frustrating like I've been in the industry for 12 years that I've been here so it's taken me a lot longer to get somewhere than somebody in a male gender would so um that unfortunately is um something in the industry that we are growing on but at the different companies that i've been at i would say throughout the 11 years it has definitely been an improvement and there are a lot of good men out there and there's a lot of positive but it's all dependent on like for me i was in a, a toxic mindset so i i so I was surrounded by that and I didn't know there was any different out there because it was my introduction to the trades and they were like, well, this is how it is. Um, this is what it's like. And it doesn't matter if you switch companies, it's just a different company, but the same stuff, but that's not true. That's not that true. is not true. And so it was really good to have um, the balls to leave and try something else and then find out that it is greener on the other side there are good people out there you just have to find them and for me like going to um school i was always the one woman there was like a hundred people that would show up to get dispersed in your four levels and i was always the one woman amongst a hundred guys and so for the longest time i'm like there's no women in the industry until a few years ago when I was like, there are women in the industry. I just have to look for them. And then once I opened myself up, I was like, there's women everywhere. <laughs> you just gotta like, you just have to try. Cause I didn't, you know, like the mindset that I was in was giving me that same environment back. So I had to change my perception and then I was opened up to different things. So, Absolutely. but yeah. So um, I would like to, um, open the floor that it, it has been open, but if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat now. Um, and then we'll, we will wrap up in a couple minutes. Um, I am going to say for, you know, speaking to Tiff's, um, experience, uh, make sure that you find a company that you are valued because that is one of the most important things you yes. can absolutely work at a company where they don't care about you. And so why yes. would you care about them? So exactly. leave. You know, I and it takes guts. It absolutely takes guts to to jump ship and find somewhere else. But find someone somewhere where you are respected and valued. Yes. And once you found that niche, you will love what you're doing. Yeah. I have to say that. And yeah. don't allow the fact that you're in a bad environment to doubt the fact that you like your job. You know, because <laughs> if you started the job and you like the job, then maybe it's just the people that you're surrounded by. Because like once I left, I was like, wow, I love what I do. I just had to pick a different table to sit at. Absolutely. Um, so the last one was, what is the fastest way to accelerate your career in construction? Oh, I think it really depends on the type of jobs you want to do, right? Um, so if you want something more hands-on, Honest, like, you know, yes, to go to school, get the trades, like, 
um, certificate. Uh, I think there's, it's anywhere from six months to uh, two years, right? And, um, you know, it, it's so funny, like putting yourself out there and like advocating what you want. I, I have, so when I, so I have a job down on Canby and I'm very curious how that one I didn't got uh, built. I actually walk into their job site. I don't know anybody. I'm like, can I talk to your site super? <laughs> and I asked the question I asked and they gave me all the, like, they just gave me the knowledge I need and they gave me all the, the contact need to talk to. So like, you know, but obviously I've been in the industry for a little bit longer. So I have that confidence, right? I didn't feel like intimidated. So it's all about your attitude. It's all about your attitude, right? So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of naysayer and there's going to be a lot of people like don't think you do, whether you're female or male, you know, they're just, gonna, you know, but if you advocate and you keep voicing what you want, like you'll get there. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Sasha, real quick, do you want to touch on on what it's like to work in a company that is uh, run and owned by a woman? Um, it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> we are actually treated amazing. Um a very, I guess, family orientated business or company. Uh, everyone's treated like family. Uh, we okay. have days specifically that we've done just for the women on our cruise to go out and get together and have fun. And um, yeah, it's just. It's like very inclusive. It is. It's very inclusive. Yeah. You get to like there's everyone from all sorts of backgrounds and, and different like position whether you're a, a, a director or a laborer yes. you know like yeah exactly we have everything from carpenters to um, painters to like our operating crew it's it's just a lot of different people and everyone just is mixed together and all one big family. It's fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, uh, I would like to thank you for a very insightful conversation. As a woman working in industry, mm -hmm. I am actually super excited to be here, empowering others to consider our industry and our different pathways. Residential construction is mm -hmm. quite different than industrial mm -hmm. or commercial work. We're building people's homes. There are many options to fast track your career and potentially own your own company one day. This might seem daunting with so many different options, but it also creates many opportunities to choose the way you learn best and to build a career based on your strengths. In this evolving industry, as we look to build more energy efficient homes with better comfort and safety, the options are endless. I encourage you to access information about grants, apprenticeships, the Canadian Red Seal program, training options available from technical schools and university programs, or at uh, haven.ca, H-A-V-A-N.ca, the Let's Build a Career page. Thank you, Tiff, Sasha, and Ivy for letting us get to know you and explore your career pathway today. Thank you, thank you also. Thank you. <laughs>